Chef Rick Tremonto has received worldwide acclaim for his diverse and creative cooking style. While I recently had the opportunity to cook up something special with him at one of his four new restaurant venues outside Chicago. What's your specialty? Like, what's your favorite? Is it Italian? Is it seafood? You is know, it it's so funny. I grew up learning Italian. I grew up in the culture of Italian. But I went to Europe to learn French and Spanish and fine dining. And now I find myself like, I love grilling. Really? Like I come home, throw up the grill, You're throw up American. some steaks, you know. Grilling, that's cash, American cash thing. Cash stuff, I like the cash Yeah, stuff, cool. Know? Okay, so what are you going to cook for us today? So we're going to, you know what we're going to do today is we're going to do an old world recipe f Ooh, um, okay. called mezzarigatoni with mussels and asparagus. And a mezzarigatoni, I want to start here, right. you know, normally rigatonis are about this big, so okay. a mezzarigatoni is like a mi mini rigatoni. Okay. So I'm going to have you cut up some asparagus that we blanched in some salt water and shocked, okay. kind of chilled it all down. All right. Nice. Look, You've been watching you. Food Network. Come on, nice. Come on. Okay. Is that good? That's perfect. We're going to take a little Multi bit of extra virgin thing. olive oil. All right. We're gonna throw it in the pan and be generous. Don't be shy with right. the olive oil. And olive oil is great because it's also heart healthy. Did it you know is that? heart healthy. Loved it. So, hot pan. We're Ooh. gonna throw a couple tablespoons of onion in there. I love that. Hear that? I love Just that. Just for television. <laughs> a little bit of garlic, about a tablespoon of garlic. We're gonna throw, you like garlic, right? I love garlic. Nice. See, 30 years to do that. I know, come right? on. Come on. <laughs> So we're gonna sweat that. All Sweating right. that means we're gonna kinda slowly pull out the juices and the and the all the flavors of the onion. We're mm. also gonna throw a little bit of uh, red crushed chili pepper in there. Ooh. Just to spice it up a little. Yeah, you know I like the spice. And all the oils from that chili is gonna kinda start to bleed out of that. Okay. Then I got these beautiful Prince Edward Island oh, mussels, which are muscles, fantastic. Yes. Yeah. We're gonna throw those right in there. This is fascinating because this is something that I don't know. But I noticed that the mussels are all closed, but I guess when you start to cook them and steam them, they start to open they up? They start to open, they'll start to release all, release all their juices. How do you know when they're done? Is I'm it gonna, when they open up? I'm gonna show you. Oh, fabulous. <laughs> A little bit of dry white wine, okay. just enough to start to steam them. Hear that? Mm. Nice, huh? And now they're gonna start to steam, They're gonna all those juices are gonna start to kind of come together. We're gonna good. throw a little lid on top. While that's steaming, we're gonna come over here, we're gonna start to cook our, our rigatoni. I got salted water going, about a half a pound of rigatonis in there that are gonna start to cook. And the mistake that I think people make all the time is how do you know when your pasta is done? How do you know when it's al dente? Well. Did you know I was Italian? I, I, you're beautiful Italian, <laughs> perfect Italian. That's the only Italian word here's, I know. Here's, here's the thing. Okay. My mom used to throw it against the wall and see if it <laughs> sticks. No. But you can't do She's that. Done. She used to bite it, yeah. and if you see that little, see how it's perfect, see that right there? See how it's a little bit white in there? Yeah. Taste. That's that perfect al dente. It's got that perfect little pull to oh. it. Perfect, right? Mussels. Okay, you oh see how the mussels are? How good that looks! Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Mm. Okay. Where's my fork? Okay, we're getting there. We're getting there. We're getting there. <laughs> I'm ahead of the game. You're we're the gonna, cook, I'm the eater. We're That's gonna toss guess. these mussels around. We're gonna mm. throw in the asparagus that you cut up. Oh my goodness. And you know the other thing is, is right now is it's, um, everything's in season. Everything's starting to explode in, in season. So, so those are going. And I love citrus. I love to cook with citrus. Mm. So I'm gonna throw a little bit of lemon in there for some mm. acid, and I'm gonna throw a little bit of orange in there for a little bit of sweetness. Very heart healthy. I pull back on a lot of the salts and the fats, yeah. and I use a lot of citrus in my cooking to bring out flavor, mm. um, and it's fabulous. I cannot wait, I tell you what. So we threw a little bit of tomato in there. And you know, throw... one of the things that my mom always taught me was it's all about presentation and color, because you eat also with your eyes, not you just do. with your mouth. So Absolutely. I, I know she got the greens and the reds and the a little bit garlic. Of salt. So we got our pasta in there, okay. beautiful. When you're cooking and you're using some pasta water and it's really seasoned and it's got some starch and Do some oil. Do you season oil, the water? I put a little salt and pepper in, I put a little oil in, because I use the water almost as part of my sauce. Watch, right? Nice. Mm. And we're I've also gonna add that. a little bit of chicken stock, just again, to coat the pasta and a little bit more sauce. Now I'm curious. Mm -hmm. Obviously it is okay to mix the different stock. So if it's chicken stock, but with a seafood, that's okay? Oh, you absolutely. You don't need like a vegetable stock no, and a you, you know seafood what? stock? I find that chicken stock is one of the most neutral stocks to use. Okay. And it will pick up all the residual flavors of the mussels. Look at those, they're beautiful. Oh my goodness. You know, and if you have clam stock at home, use clam stock. If you're going to all that trouble to use 
to make fish stock and put it in your freezer, by all means. Okay. You know, for me, um, the richness, the depth of some of the chicken stocks that I get at the store, the low sodium stuff, it's just a great neutral flavor okay. that, uh, that works really, really well. Okay. And it'll butter. pick up on the acid. I'm now, all about the butter, just, butter. Just, to, <laughs> just a little bit. Just a little bit. Just to kind of bring the sauce together, just to kind of bring this whole thing together. You're making me happy, bit. Rick. You're making me very happy. It's all good. <laughs> We're going to just steam this for just another second. Okay. I always wonder this. When you're at home yes. and you've cooked all day, do you just say, let me bust out a peanut butter and jelly sandwich? <laughs> or even with your peanut butter and jelly sandwich, is it, it's a presentation, we got a little parsley on the side? You know what it is, is I'm a tuna fish sandwich. Are you really? Well, I travel all over the world, like I'm sure you do. There's two things that I judge on, yeah. BLTs and then tuna fish sandwiches. You know, I love tuna Easy fish sandwiches, simple. right? Toasted tuna fish sandwich, some potato chips, right? Yeah, Isn't that yeah, funny? I love I mean, that. Hey, like... okay, simple, simple. <laughs> okay, here we go. Oh my goodness. Nice. Smell. Nice, oh, huh? my lord. Okay. Ah! Little things make me happy. This as is they, a big thing and I'm as thrilled. They, as they should. Oh my goodness. As they should. And the asparagus and all the mussels. And again, all the juice of the mussels. And you see how the butter kind of brought that oh sauce my together? Goodness. Incredible. You know what's so pathetic is I'm sitting there looking and you do everything with such ease that I'm so confident. I'm like, I could so do this at home. But I know it would not look <laughs> as beautiful. I don't believe you. I don't believe you. I bet you do great at home. <laughs> I do all right. Look at that, huh? Oh, nice. Looks phenomenal. Now, we're gonna just do a little bit of olive oil to finish. And a little bit more basil. Fresh. Now, what's fresh. the difference, obviously, between fresh and um, the, is the dry? I would take it the fresh. Well, there's no comparison. <laughs> fresh greater. is vibrant. Here's, here's what I always say. Yeah. If you put this in your hand, mm -hmm. watch, and go like this, right? Yeah. That says it all, right? Mm. There you go. Dig in. Oh Grab a goodness. muscle. Okay. All right. I know you're married, but I could still kiss you right now. <laughs> She'll get over it. I know. <laughs> oh my goodness. I love this. Okay, now, just out of curiosity. Yes. How do you determine what you're gonna cook? It really becomes focusing on what God has given us and what the farmers are producing, when they're producing it. I always, always pray before I start to write my seasonal menus and mm -hmm. I always try to get inspiration from the other parts of the art, like music, mm -hmm. church, mm -hmm. love going to the museum and seeing this beautiful Monet or Dolly and I get yeah. inspired by that. So I pull from different areas yeah. and just reading you know, reading the word and watching what, you know, looking at what Jesus ate and fish and mm -hmm. vegetables and being inspired and going and doing some research in those regions. Why do you think people have such a taking to your cooking, to your presentation, to your style? What I, is it? I think it's honest cooking. Like everything needs to be in balance, but yeah. full of flavor, like lots of concentrated yeah. flavors, and mm -hmm. they can trust that it's going to be the real mm -hmm. deal. It's, that's what it's about. Well, I vouch, it is the real <laughs> deal. Brother man is the bomb. High five. All right. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much. Thanks, Doug. <laughs>